Welcome my friends! This video will go through how to set up an in a shrouded dedicated local server on your PC or a secondary backup PC that you have on your network. It is quite straightforward to get it up and running, although I did run into one issue which took a bit of googling to resolve. It turns out I wasn't the only one having those issues. I will mention this pitfall later so that you can avoid it, not to worry. First off, go to your client. If you don't have the Enshrouded Dedicated Server, you do need to go up here and ensure you have tools also ticked in because otherwise it will not show up because it's not a game, it's a tool, it's a server. Then you click to install it, you select your drive and hit install. This is going to take a while, sit back, relax. Once completed, you go to the Enshrouded Dedicated Server, right click, Properties, Install Files and Browse. This will take you down to the installed files for the server. It is missing a bunch of folders because it hasn't been run yet. So there's no save folder, etc. So what we want to do, one double click at one, run the server once. Let it go through everything you saw in the background. It populated and created a bunch of folders and some more files. Now that is done, I think it's good. We're going to just close it. The important file that we want to edit here is the shrouded underscore server dot json which is a configuration file so we're going to edit it like this and we'll see there's a few things we can change here we're going to change the name for instance we're going to call it vet test we're going to put in a password we're going to call it def one i'm going to leave the other stuff unchanged we do want to take note of the game port and the query port if you're changing these ones you do need to make a note so you can do the appropriate port forwarding. For now, we're just gonna save it. I'm gonna minimize this and we are ready to actually start the server. However, before we do that, you do have to go to your router if you want to allow access from outside of your network. So you wanna find wherever in your router you can do port forwarding. If you don't know where to do that, look in the manual. If you can't find it in the manual, I will leave a link in the description to a website that has a bunch of router brands and models that you can at least get some information and hopefully can find it there because they do guide you through how to do port forwarding. And the website is portforward.com slash router.htm. If you scroll down, you'll see a bunch of different brands and you can go in and check them out. Maybe your specific model is not here, but pick another one or a few other ones and at least check through them because at least that might give you some idea of how to accomplish that on your particular router. If you really can't get this to work, you might want to call tech support of either your router brand or your ISP if you have the router through the ISP. It is a networking issue, but you do need to resolve it if you want people to connect from outside of your network. What happens is that the client outside will try to connect to your router on these ports. Your router will then need to forward that on to your PC to the game server in order for it to work. On your router, you also want to go and grab your WAN IP, meaning your external public IP, because it's also going to be needed. Usually it's on a status page or something. If you can find it again, go to the manual. It will say something like this IP address and it'll have the number. Of course, I've blanked that out, but you need this IP. But all right, we are ready to run the server. Now, there are two ways to run the server. One is the wrong one, which is to hit launch in the client. And this is what I and others did. And it causes an issue because it does not show up in the server browser and it's not accessible. You have to run the executable here within this folder. Why this happens, I don't know. I would guess that it's got something to do with that when you're running it here, it's not picking up the correct property files. And so the configurations are not correct and that's why you're not able to connect. Regardless, don't use the launch, double click on the shrouded underscore server.exe and let it initialize. So how do we connect? Well, it should be simple. You play and you search for the server and everything is good. Well, unfortunately, no. But you do go play, you do go join, and then you go like, oh, this is my server that I'm going to, because that's a vet test. It doesn't show up like this, unfortunately. It only does because I've actually tried it out already. Otherwise, it does not show up. There is, however, a server browser here with a lot of servers and it's really difficult to find yours because there are so many servers and there's only so much space here and so much that the server browser can accomplish which means that you probably will not be able to find your server in the list and even if you do a search it'll probably not show up i was trying to do this i was sitting waiting trying to search refreshing i just could not find it reason being there's simply way too many so how does my server 
actually show up on the first page here. That's because I added it as a favorite in my Steam server client. And I'm going to show you how to do this. And this is the recommended way of connecting to your server because the developers know that the server browser is having problems. It cannot show everything. So they have recommended that people are using the Steam server favorite. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Do you want to go back to your Steam client? Go under View and Game Servers. The first time you want to go to Favorites and you're going to hit plus here and you want to type in your external IP, the one that I showed previously, as well as the port. So it'll be whatever XXX, XXX, whatever you have, colon, and 15637, which is the query port. And this is why you need that external public IP. When you do that, it will show up here as a favorited server that you can connect to. And in order to connect, you simply hit connect, type in the password, hit join game, the game will start up. You again navigate play, join, and it will be here at the top because you favorited it in your Steam. And that will allow you to join it. Now I'm going to do this, type in the password again. So things will load in and we can play it. If you've gotten all set up, you can log in. The ports are forwarded so friends can log in. The server is running and everyone can play together. Just make sure they're adding the server to the favorites. I believe that if they right click on you and put join on friend, if you are in the game, I think that will work as well. A few extras to mention. The server is expected to run about 4.5 GB of RAM while it's idle, with each player connected requiring an extra 100 megabytes each. Safe for the world, is on the server. However, the character progression is on the clients. I find this a bit annoying, but it is re in that respect similar to how Valheim and some other games handle it. I don't like it, but it's how they do it. Running a dedicated server this way does require you to run your PC and the game server the whole time in order to, for people to be able to connect. And if this is not workable, then you should consider renting a hosted server from a provider such as Pink Perfect. If you go this route, I will leave a link below to the Pink Perfect hosting website with my 10% monthly discount code if you're going to do that. But for now, thank you for watching. If you want to help me out, leave a like, subscribe and comment below if you have any questions, thoughts or issues that people can hopefully help with. Catch you next time. We are waking up.